The first one out for tonight is uh, Suresh Balayi. He comes from HSBC. He's the regional head of marketing uh, for Asia Pacific and he's based here in Hong Kong. He has had uh, various roles across sales, product development, marketing strategy, and media. He's worked in places like um, GlaxoSmithKline, WPP, and of course now HSBC. He describes himself as a data and analytic junkie. He's a foreign and policy policy dabbler and a philosophy dilettante. He's worked in different, across six cities, across um, both India and Middle East and UK. He's a chemistry graduate, which sort of threw me off by surprise. But, and of course, he has a business degree from Oxford. So in short, this is a, a data junkie who knows chemistry, he likes philosophy, that, and he does marketing for a living. And of course, he has a title that goes with all this. So he wrote me and says, my experiments in decoding the amorphous world of marketing is what I'm going to ramble about. So here is Suresh. Thanks, Lars. In a sense, he to told you all that I'm totally messed up, right? <laughs> so thanks for that. Uh, hey, nice to meet you all. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Really, really glad to be here. And the food looks great. Never been to this restaurant. The restaurant looks great. Uh, so thanks a lot. A lot of fresh thinkers around. I was having a ch some chats with some of you all. And uh, there's so much excitement in this big, bad, amorphous world of marketing, right? I'm sure all of you are swimming through it. Um, very quickly, two quick questions, right? Um, just to gauge where you're all at. How many people from agencies slash media world? How many people from marketing? Okay, the guys who pay the checks and the guys who don't pay the checks, right? So <laughs> very few people who pay the checks, so good to know. Um, how many people been in the industry for over 15 years? Okay, okay, there are, there are six of us old people here. Uh, <laughs> good. <laughs> so, so I started, I started uh, close to 20 years ago uh, in sales in pharmaceuticals. Um, I was a graduate trainee in Smith Klein Beecham and I did some uh, frontline pharma sales, a little bit of marketing, a little bit of everything. And I look back at that world and what we do in marketing and sales and advertising today is completely different, right? If somebody time traveled from 1997 to today, they wouldn't know what to do in the office. Honestly, they just wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Suresh of 1997 coming in today wouldn't know what is going on. So this amorphous world of marketing has been so amorphous. Nothing happened for like 50 years and bang, in the last five years, the world has completely changed and it's all all of you know this, I don't, have to, I don't have to belabor the point. But my sort of discussion today is going to be around how have I sort of paddled through this? What are the things that have kept me true and on the straight and narrow? And what are the things that I could probably tell you about that can, that can help you sort of paddle through these crazy waves, right? Um, I want to, so when we, when we were talking about all these and the world of marketing, etc. I have a colleague called Jen, and she told me this, this story, okay? This marketing slash advertising person dies and goes to heaven, okay? Walks in through the pearly, ga pearly gates, yeah? There's St. Peter waiting there and saying, hey, buddy, come on in. Um, and St. Peter says, we've changed. All businesses have transformed, so we've changed our world, and we have become customer-centric. And this guy goes, what? Pearly Gates Big Western City, what does that mean? He says, we, we will give you the choice between heaven or hell, okay? So he says, okay, let me see it. Quickly opens curtain number one. That's hell. And he sees there are some, some people, there's a DJ playing some music, people having drinks, it practically looks like Wulu Mulu, right? Nice food. Yeah, it looks like this, right? So, so he goes, oh, that's interesting. Can I see heaven then? Opens the curtain, shows him heaven. Some people playing golf, some people playing harp, 
you know, something really nice. It's so fun, right? So he goes, wow, this is really interesting. He says, can I make a choice? He says, yeah, of course you can make a choice. He says, I'll pick hell. Right? Great food, great music, everything else. He says, come on in, sign here, sign on the dotted line. Signs on the dotted line, opens the door, kicks him in, closes the door. It's actually hot boiling oil and devils, right? He says, hey, St. Peter, what the hell is going on? Right? Literally, uh, you, you promised me something else. He says, well, you're a marketer, you know how it is. You were a prospect then, you're a customer now. <laughs> so uh, there's a reason why I'm telling you this story, right? So in all this paddling over all these years, there are a few truths that have not changed, right? Irrespective of whether the way Google do business, the way the other media owners do business, the way we restructure our marketing teams, etc., there are a few truths. At the heart of this whole conversation is the customer. So what has kept me on the straight and narrow is ensuring the key principles, Philip Kotler's five Ps, somebody's three Cs, somebody's four Qs, three S's, whatever it is, eventually it boils down to something, right? It boils down to, is your business really customer centric? That's why, that's why we all wake up in the morning and get to work. If you're an agency, it's about your client's customers. If you are the client, it's about your customers, right? And there are some tenets of, there are some real tenets of all the research that we've done, of all the insights work that we've done, there are some real tenets of customer centricity and I'll talk to you about in a minute, right? The second one is creative excellence. There are so many of you who are from the agency. I think there is, you are in the marketplace, marketing is about the market, right? It's not about interning, right? It's most marketers are just busy talking about with, among themselves, with their operations people, salespeople, fighting internal battles. It's about what's out there. It's about the marketplace. So how do you, if you have to differentiate in the marketplace, how are your products differentiated and how, are your, how is your business differentiated, right? And lastly, commercial value. What has not gone away? And the increased conversations we have with our friends at Google, the increased conversations that we have internally is all about, you may call it Romi, return on marketing investment, return on advertising investment, return on media investment, return on investment, whatever you may call it, delta revenue over delta spend, however you want to count it. There is a reason why dollars are given to marketers and they have to get, bring dollars back, right? So there, that, that's not gone away. Irrespective of, there might be a new wave of programmatic, there might be a new wave of social, there might be a new wave of, wave of mobile first advertising, etc. These tenets have not changed, right? So whenever I have conversations with my teams, I tell them, keep, if, if you're a marketer, keep these three in mind, you're never going to go out of fashion. Irrespective of, irrespective of whatever else happens, right? I think within, within the overall customer centricity, what do customers really want from us, right? So from all the recent research and everything that everyone says, I think at the heart of it, it is a relationship, right? It's a trust. The big danger with digital is digital makes everything transactional. Or it could make things transactional. Everything is a funnel. But guess what, the funnel doesn't end, right? When they become your customer, it's like a bit of a French horn. They come in and they go through a life cycle with you. If they're a mortgage customer in our case, they go through seven, eight, nine years with us. If they are a mobile phone customer, if, they, they, if, you, are, if you are Apple, you probably go through a one full year of customer life cycle till, till the product dies. So funnel thinking is dangerous. So make, it makes it transactional. So real winners in this space will be people who look at digital and go, how do we use digital to build relationships? Right? That's what we're seeing. So the heart of this thing is a relationship story. And there are sort of four tenets of relationships, I feel. Okay? And, uh, I may have read it somewhere. I may have added some pieces to this. Right? The first piece is dependability. It's the same for you guys in the agency or uh, you as clients. You want people that you can depend on. Right? When you say, I, I want something, and you feel that, and, and if someone says, yes, I promise to give you that, does it come back? That's at the heart of brands, right? You know for a fact that when you go and buy an Apple iPhone, it is dependable. It will not break, right? You know when you, when you go and tell the team at Google that this is my media plan, please can you execute it? You will depend on them to execute it to the best of their abilities, and which is what builds brands, right? Which is what builds great brands. You know even when you, when you search for you know, your own name, 
on Google, you can depend on Google to turn up the best results possible, right? This is what makes Google, right? So, so I think there is a bit of, the, at the heart, at the base of all this is dependability. So think about, irrespective of what you do in the, in the amorphous world of digital, are you promising what you can deliver? If you can't, don't do it, okay? The next level is reciprocity. All, all the relationships, irrespective of how much em our emotions there might be and the emotional connect that people build over a period of time in relationships, it is a commercial exchange most of the time, right? Or it is, a, it is an exchange most of the time. Customers are giving you their data so that they can get something back. They're giving you money so that they can get something back. They're giving you their time so that they can get something back. If you do not reciprocate, it's like a relationship, right? It's like a, it's like a relationship with your friends or with your partner or with your spouse. There is, at the heart of it, there has to be some reciprocity. It cannot be one-sided, right? So that's the next layer. The third layer, which many brands do not understand and they cannot activate this on digital, is sacrifice, right? So at the heart of good relationships is people looking at you going, what has they actually let go to have me in this relationship, right? Or what has she let go to have me in this relationship? Can you actually show? So we've seen lots of studies where um, when customers go and meet relationship managers or customers go and meet sales executives, a good sales executive will tell you, you know what, this actually doesn't make sense for us as a business, but we are going to do this for you because of customer anyway. Right, you go, wow, he's actually ready to let go of something, which means he probably respects me, right? So can digital bring about, it is, it is maybe about giving people something for free, maybe about giving something giving some of the time back, maybe about you know, carving something out of your margin to be able to pay back. Maybe it is about sacrificing a side of at least telling people that you know, and showing them what you're actually sacrificing to gain that business. I think at the heart of it, digital struggles to do this. I think if whoever cracks this really well, I think will build a relationship model, right? And the last piece is why we do what we do. So over the many years that I've spent across all these locations, uh, running away before I'm found, um, trying to see what really works, I think nothing works like intent. It's why you do what you do, right? Nobody, nobody cares about, there is this gentleman called Simon Sinek. How many of you have heard of Simon Sinek? A few of you, right? Look Simon Sinek up, okay? Look his video up, okay? He talks about what, why, and how, right? But the heart of it is why. Irrespective of whether it's my teams, or irrespective of whether it's our business or our brands, if we have a clear understanding of purpose, if we know why we do what we do, I think it's easier. Purpose leads all other conversations, right? For, I'll give you an example. In banking, people don't wake up in the morning and say, today I will buy a mortgage. It's not like buying a stick of gum, right? Um, People think about why they, why they come and ask for a mortgage is because they want a dream home for their family. Right? They, want, they want a place where the children will have memories of. Right? Um, they, do not want, they do not wake up in the morning and say, today I will buy a personal loan. Right? They, buy, they, get, they come and ask for a personal loan because they want to go on this holiday that they promised their girlfriend they will take them on. Right? Whatever it is. So why people do what they do is important and ask why. Even, even for, I, I tell my teams in this whole digital space, there's so much craziness. Someone is talking to me about programmatic, somebody is talking, someone else is talking to us about uh, what do we do with mobile search, what do we do with app development, what do we do with all sorts of stuff. When we ask the question, why should we do this? What's in it for our customers? And how do we build a relationship based on this? I think the game changes, right? So, in this big bad world, amorphous world of digital and changing world of marketing, I think my request to you is to ask a lot of questions. Don't get frazzled by all the change. There's change is the one only constant as they say, it'll continue to change. But stick to some basic tenets that you really believe in, take a stand, right? As a marketer, all of you can take a stand for the customer. Customer centric, bring a bit of creativity because we all have we get permission to be creative. Think of commercial value. 
I think this is where the world has changed. This is where digital has changed the world. It's not just about pretty pictures and coloring in. Um, uh, our head of digital call, still calls me the coloring in department, right? It's not about coloring in. This is little books where you color in with crayons. That's what, that's what the marketing team used to be. Now it's all about data science. Um, but don't, don't be afraid to ask why. Yeah? Why should we do search? Ask these chaps, right? They're, and they'll tell you why. Ask, ask yourselves, why should we do programmatic? And someone will tell you. If they don't, then don't do it. Okay? Really nice meeting you. Um, I have lots of case studies I could have shared at some point, but maybe next time. Um, but talk to me uh, if you want to know what we're actually doing in walking into the 22nd century. Okay? But thanks a lot. Thanks, Lars. Bye -bye.